Hello, this is Hakka Davina, and today we are going to be tumbling again. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Whew. Without further ado, let's get right into this. I probably spoke way too fast. Stop memorizing my act patterns. That's messed up. Who let you do that? Mother or fricker, you know what? I'm entering my second phase. Have fun with the choir arrangement of my theme, in butt at all. That was the Balladier fight. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Pirates of the Caribbean really introduce an eldritch octopus man who kills indiscri indiscriminately and torments the dead as their poster villain. And then you watch movies and it's like, oh no, actually, the worst villain in the series is a small, a white, a British man who functions as a herald of capitalism. And that was very brave of them. Here's a man so heartly as he has literally cut his own heart out of his chest. But he's still not as evil as the freaking East India uh, Trading Company. Dang. Yay, an image. I've never seen an image before. Anyway, let's see what this is about. In honor of people crapping on Jen Alpha for watching Skibbity Twillet, I like to share the kind of stuff I watched when I was six. Ball games with angry birds? Okay, you were six like 12 years ago, or less than that. I was six in 2006. Damn, I'm old. Okay. What the heck was that? Anyway, I think a bird just flew into my window again. Oh, well. Look, I get it. Skippy Twilight is stupid, nonsensical, low quality, etc, etc. You have the right to believe that. But I need you to realize that a lot of the stuff we watched when we were their age was just as, if not lower quality, as Skippy Twilight is. I don't get the hatred for Skippy Twilight. I mean, sure, it's a little bit... dumb, but... It's not like it's that bad. It's just a Gmod out of meme series. And it has a story, like a lot of the stuff kids watch. Yes, I would absolutely love if Gen Alpha had higher quality content to watch, but that doesn't give me the right to judge them for enjoying what content they have. They're children. They cling to what they can for entertainment. That's not something we should judge anyone for. It's human nature. Yes, we don't understand Skippy Twilight, but we understand what it's like to be snared by silly in music and pre shapes and colors, and by blaming Jen Alpha for simply enjoying the same things we enjoyed as children is not only hypocritical and pedantic, but flat out traumatic. Man, I'm gonna really be real. Sometimes those freaking kids shows just absolutely um, grab my attention too. Like, they are incredibly good at, at grabbing attention and making kids watch them. And it even works for a lot of adults. I 
We're doing the same exact thing the generations before I said to make us hate them. We're pulling the back in my day card. I remember when I was six watching YouTube poops and Minecraft Let's Plays and whatever the heck Ball Games with the Angry Birds is. And I remember being told that what I was watching was rotting my brain and low quality garbage. And that I should feel ashamed for watching it. Not just as with YouTube either, but just media in general. TV, video games, music, books, and so on and so forth. The thing is, it did make me feel ashamed. It made me, me want to hide my interest. Okay. I was 6 in 2006. You were 6 12 years ago. So you're like... I can't do the math. 18. I'm 23. I was watching Courage the Cowardly Dog and Scooby Doo and Thomas and, and Tom and Jerry. And yeah, I got out uh, of that stuff of as well when I was a kid. Don't do this to kids. It made me feel stupid for liking things I did. It alienated me from those who are older than me. It led me to be overly defensive of the things I enjoy. It's made those rose-scented nostalgia uh, goggles even rosier. Now we're doing the same exact thing to Gen Alpha, where we can their emotions feel invalid as a way to cope up with how our emotions were invalidated by the Millennials. Whose emotions were invalidated by Gen X, whose emotions were invalidated by the Boomers, so on and so forth, and that is actually not really how it usually works. Mostly Millennials and Gen X were both traumatized by Boomers. Boomers are just worse, though. I mean, you can't really get much worse than literally destroying the country and still running it down into the ground. The only thing we get out of mocking Gen Alpha is alienating them from us and keeping the evil cycle going. Most of Gen Z are adults now, whether we like it or not. Gen Alpha has been brought into a shitty world with very little to take comfort in. And it's our responsibility as adults to not make it any crappier than it has to be. We need to work together to break the cycle. Agreed. Basically, stop roasting kids for what they like. And honestly, they probably have to for liking what they do because it's actually a lot of good stuff. Sure, the Skibbity Twilight thing is kind of dumb, but who cares? Have you seen Bluey? We never had a show as kids that starred a, an openly autistic character. Like, that's, that's insane. And that's amazing. Thanks for making this hot tea, bro. Why did the steam make this shape of a skull and crossbones when you stirred it? <laughs> yep, that's the inter that's the enforcement new groove. That came out in 2000? Wow, I'm old. No, wait, that's when I was born. Fathers casually dropping the craziest lore of their lives in the middle of a conversation. My brother and I trying to piece together our dad's life based on random info he casually brings up once and it never mentions again. Actually, no, the funny side is a Pokemon on other ones that are half normal type. Like, yeah, this lion breathes fire, but not that much fire, you know? It's still a lion. Girl dinner broke the internet. Here's what we do church this. Think about it. Do we just have the essentials forever about what things are worthwhile to talk about? Remember when Nat Geo was a prestigious publication? Yeah. I 
I wonder why it's not prestigious anymore. Is there one character that gets sexualized all the time that you personally don't like being sexualized? Honestly, yes. Because all the loot stuff involving her has weird slavery imagery. Hmm. I do not know that character. <laughs> no. <laughs> Looks at the cock. Oh, I shouldn't trust my brain here. Or maybe. Bates in my negative if thoughts. The clock! The clock! The clock! The clock! Be this typo. You'll never take me alive! <laughs> Fucked with fruit nutrients. Did someone violate my cranberries? If I could just get nutrients freaked into me, that would make life way easier. Give me that vitamin and D, you know what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. Who the heck put that hole there though, honestly? Like they they had to know what they were doing, right? Or did they just print it wrong? Either someone put a hole where they should have put it, or they printed it. The word where or, or there was a hole and they didn't really think about it. Silly Willy and his beloved pickle. Aww. Sometimes the lad just wants to cuddle with his giant pickle. Willy, we get it and we love you. That's adorable. The Pikmin and forced to dance to the beat of groovy long legs. One, two, step, step, one, two. Ah. I don't get it. If I get the egg, well, try. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2003 ad. 2012, when you say there will be horrific body horror at the function. Here we come! I don't get this! Why won't you freaking die? This is now moving to all forms of attacks. Frick, this is like the worst thing that could happen to me. Historically accurate by Dinosaur Bazooka. This was also epic. What? I think Tumblr went a little bit. It just went off, honestly. What the heck is going on? Hmm. Hot take! Beast hu Beast's human form isn't ugly at all. OG Beast's design is just so striking a mere human can't live up to it. However, I propose that we make him hairier with a darker color palette to bridge the gap. 
Fair enough. I... I'm so lost. How are you? Fine. Look closer. I'm fine, and you? I'm fine. Fine. Eating my lunch. I'm doing fine. Just finished lunch. I like my computer. Lunch computer. Lunch computer, fine. Look closer. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Just finished lunch. I like your computer. Lunch computer. Eat my lunch. I'm doing fine. Fine. <laughs> oh my goodness. Honestly, I love taking the crap out of the um, edgy e e posts. I've watched enough of the anime to know where this goes. I haven't watched any of this anime, and I refuse to. I don't care what anyone says, I'm not investing in, in a thousand episode anime. Ever. I think I saw the main character of an anime today. He was out with who I assume was his girlfriend. And they literally looked like this. Roger and D Jessica Rabbit. Time to evil jerk off. Counter spell. Oh, it's Kellogg's. Oh my goodness. Timothy's horrific bricked up eight is emblematic of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle 2012's biggest problem. Almost every line is either dragged out as hell or like this one, completely dropped. What happened to Timmy? I mean, Timothy, sorry. Sometimes I hyper focus so hard on something, I forget I'm a person until someone interacts with me. I feel like some wild animal seeing a human being for the first time. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to speak and stuff. Me, doing something for hours on end without stopping. Someone, hey, are you there? I was just wondering if you'd like to. Me, what the heck are you? Oh, right, I was just talking stuff. Oh. We haven't seen this in a while. Some girl in my class was talking about Elk McDonald's Shamrock Shakes, and this yeehaw dude in cowboy boots said they suck, and then he looked me in the eyes and said, what you're gonna do is go to Arby's and get yourself a mint chocolate chip shake. And he said with such authority and certainty that I did so as soon as I got in my car. I see your concern, y'all, but this wasn't a man telling me what to do. This was a man who had important knowledge and shared it with me. He was aiding me on a quest I didn't even know I was on. You fool. That was Arby himself. My goodness. How many times has, has this been reposted?
<laughs> Where my thigh high boots on a walk today, and we had to take a path through some long grass, and while everyone else was rolling their pants into their socks and putting on jackets to protect themselves from ticks, I was saying they're smug as hell in my thigh high leather boots. A hoe never gets Lyme disease. A hoe never gets Lyme disease. That is beautiful. <sighs> this is gonna be a fun one. And yes, I want to zoom in because my eyesight is horrible. I need new glasses actually. Because sometimes there are invisible tests and invisible rules, and you're just supposed to know the rule. Someone you thought of as a friend asks you for book recommendations. So you give her, her a list of like 30 books, each with a brief blurb and why you like it. Later you find out you she screenshotted the list and sent it to a group chat with a note, One absolute freak, can you believe this? You saw the responses, emojis where people are rolling over, laughing. Too much and obsessive and actually kind of creepy in the comments. You thought you did doing the right thing. She had asked, right? An invisible rule. This is what some happens when you get too excited. You are supposed to laugh at your own jokes, so you don't. But then you're too serious. You're not supposed to be too loud. What do people say? Hey, you're too quiet. You are supposed to get passionate about things, but then you're shy. Boring. You're supposed to talk too much. But if you are mad when you're not good at replying, you fold yourself into a prettier paper crane since you never know what is selfish and what is charity. You give yourself over fully. You'd rather be empty and over generous. You'd rather eat your own boundaries than have even one person believe that you're mean since you don't know what the thing is that will make them hate you. You simply scrub yourself clean of any form of roughness. If you are perfect and smiling and funny, they can love you. If you are always there for them and never admit what's happening, and never mention your past and never make them uncomfortable, you can make up for it. You can earn it. Their typical people are awful. Don't mess up! They're all testing you! Always! They're tolerating you. Whatever secret club happened over a summer somewhere during some activity that you didn't get to attend, everyone else just figured it out. Like they got some kind of award or examination that allowed them to know how to be normal. How to fit. And for the rest of your life, you've been playing catch up. You've been trying to prove that, haha, you get it. That's a joke they are telling. The people they are. The manual they got. Yeah, you've totally read it. And you can just divide yourself in two, the level one and the one that is you. You can do this, you can walk the line. They can laugh and accept you. If you are always balanced, never burdensome, a delight to have in class. Champagne and glittery, and never gawky or fluorescent, or god forbid, cringe. You can get away with it. You stare at your therapist, whom you can make jokes with, who laughs at your jokes because you are so fucking good, people pleasing. You smile at her, and she asks how you're doing, and you automatically say, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Well, the answer swims somewhere in your lizard brain. How long have you been doing it now? Mastering the art of your, your body and mind like you're piloting a puppet. Has it worked? What do you mean that all you feel is just exhausted? Pick yourself up. The tightrope has no net after all. You're cheating somehow, but nobody seems to know you actually flunked the test. It's working. Aren't you happy yet? My goodness, that got really dark at the end. But, um... I should have given that voice. Anyway. 
this is literally how a lot of um, neurotypical people treat people who are not like them. People with certain disabilities are treated like crap for expressing themselves, for being themselves and not playing these mind games that nobody knows us how to play. A lot of people seem to pretend that everyone knows us these rules, but that is not the case. There are a lot of people who do not know the rules. So maybe if you're gonna enforce rules, make them fucking apparent. Like, what is a social contract? Explain that to people. Don't just automatically call someone a neckbeard because they don't understand boundaries or something. So people just don't, don't know because it's never explained in, in certain terms. It's always a vague rule or vibe that for some reason, a lot of people who are not abnormal don't get invited to understanding. And that does include me. And I hate that I'm calling them not normal when they are normal for not understanding something that was never explained to them. It's more weird to be expecting people to understand based on a vibe or something that that nobody explains or tells anyone ever. That's that's the not normal thing. Anyway. <sighs> oh, this is about Stranger Things. I'm just going to skip it. Welcome to Autism Subway. Can I get you the same thing you've already here since you were eight? Thank you. I would absolutely love the usual. I feel like I've been at one place long enough where I actually could probably say, hey, just give me the usual, but at the same time, I just always I specified exactly what I wanted. Anyway, that was Tumblr. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!